Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to look into another properly underrated weapon, which is the VPO-209. There are only two weapons that fire 366 ammo in Tarkov, and we've covered the VPO-215 already previously. Although the bolt action is great for being really cheap, working with the Tarkov shooter questline and getting sniper skill up through killing at long ranges, the VPO-209 is its meaner, uglier assault rifle equivalent big brother. IRL is classified as a shotgun, but in Tarkov it's found under assault carbines. There are both pros and cons to the 209. On the plus side, firstly it could be modded like an AK which we'll go through, but this is typically some of the most cost effective tinkering that you can do in Tarkov for intermediate attachments. It's very cheap to suppress because it doesn't share a suppressor with any other weapon. Usually suppressors are relatively expensive because they're shared across many guns, meaning that players can choose from a fairly wide selection for high-end kits. However, in this case, the only people using these are the 215 and 209 users for which overall demand is lower. Number three, regular non-AP ammo is very cheap and does incredible flesh damage. We'll look at ammo in more detail later as well, but the lowest damage round for this caliber is 73. And number four, the AP ammo for this weapon is still allowed on the fleet in 12.12 so far, and is very strong dealing 90 damage per hit. With 42 pen, it will deal with class 4 handily out to 150 meters even with the 12.12 penetration drop-offs. The most comparable weapon to the 209 is the Vepa KM from Skier that fires regular 7.62. This is where the biggest downside of the 209 becomes clear, it has much higher recoil than its regular counterpart. Given both weapons are semi-auto, it is manageable but it shouldn't be overlooked. The base weapon costs 32,000 rubles from Jaeger 1 with 194 recoil and for theory's sake we can get this to 115 recoil using meta parts. Not that you'd do this though, what an abomination. You can also buy it from Skier 1 after completing stirrup for a slightly cheaper 29k. Mechanic 2 also has just the lower at 24,000, but this isn't really enough of a discount to bother with unless you're just using it to change over the mods from a weapon with lower durability. So the first build that I have for you today is a janky budget suppressed version that costs about 35,000 rubles on top of the trader weapon. All of the builds in this video are going to be suppressed because we really want to be taking advantage of that cheap part, and there aren't any loud muzzles to take its place if you don't use it. It provides 10% recoil reduction, which is equivalent to 29 flat recoil points on this weapon, but you can take it off if you don't want to spend the money or feel that it's unnecessary. So in version 1, we use the Ultimac M1B gas tube from Skier 1 for 2,500 rubles, the suppressor from the Flea for around 20k, and the recoil pad from Prapor 2 at 4k. The Ultimac can take optics directly onto it, and if you link search this, you can find the cheapest possible reflex, which is usually the PK06 these days, as Jaeger has it listed directly on him for 8,400 rubles. The PK-06 is okay, but it's not very good, but it will do for this budget build. This gets us to 30 ergo and 148 recoil. Alternatively, keeping on the original gas tube, we can add the AK-100 handguard from Prapper 1, which gives us the ability to add a foregrip. The Knight's Armament Vertical adds 7 ergo for 3,800 rubles, which is a nice boost for cheap, and then we add a TTO-1 mount instead of the rear sight. Again, we can place the PK-06 onto this for maximum cheapness. This comes to 35 ergo and 151 recoil and is a touch more expensive at 39k of mods instead. Next up onto the proper builds, a good level 2 version is as follows. For the handguard, we'll either use the CAA or the Magpul MOE AKM handguard, both on Peacekeeper 2. The CAA is slightly cheaper and doesn't need an M-lock rail, but it gives 3 less ergonomics. The four grips will take the Zenit RK4 from Skier 2 for 9000 rubles as it's one of the earliest grips available with minus 2% recoil reduction as well as a bit of ergo. Again, we'll add the recoil pad from Prapor, as this is basically a must-have for any of the standard AK stocks, and using the Bastion dust cover from Skier 1 allows us to apply any sort of optic that we want to. For pistol grips, the saw gives you some good ergonomics of plus 5 versus the standard one. Bang on the suppressor from the flea as before, and we get to 43 ergo and 136 recoil for about 92k, but bear in mind this is with no mags, lasers, flashlights, or scopes. We can improve this build slightly using level 3 traders. Most of it stays the same, but we can instead replace the gas block with the VDM CS gas tube. The benefit of this is that you can apply a very specific handguard, which is the Krebs Custom UFM that is found on Peacekeeper 4, but because it's a bit unusual in requiring a specific gas tube, it's typically under 10,000 rubles on the flea. I've spoken about this handguard before, and people always forget about it, and for the stats that it gives, it's actually really good, and by the way, it works on pretty much any long AK that you want to mod, i.e. it won't work for the 74U series and some of the other short versions like the 102, 4 and 5, but it will work on most of the others. Onto this, we add the key mod rail from Peacekeeper 2, and then the RVG foregrip from Peacekeeper 3. If you want to pump up the ergonomics a bit more, we can replace the whole stock with the UAS stock, which gives plus 16 ergo versus the wooden stock and pad of just 5. This version takes you to 58 ergonomics and 133 recoil. 
The UAS is about 13 to 15k on the flea normally as it's a quest reward and you get a bunch of them, so they're almost always cheaper than they should be. At that price, for an extra 11 ergonomics, I think it's actually fairly compelling. Now, the 209 takes all of the magazines that a regular 762 AK does, causing hilarious moments if you load in the wrong type because the gun simply won't work, but given this is a semi-auto, we don't need a massive magazine. Call me crazy, but I think there might actually be a place for the long 10 rounder mags if you're thinking of using it as a kind of semi-auto DMR. The basic 30 rounders from Prapor 4 lose 4 ergo, whereas these 10 rounders give you plus 7. This is a swing of 11 ergonomics, which is actually kind of tempting. If you did that, this would take our best build to 65 ergonomics and 133 recoil, which considering it's suppressed is actually pretty nuts. Alternatively, if you're using it on more of an assault basis, you can get the 30 rounders that only lose 1 ergo from Peacekeeper 3 or Prapor 3 instead. Lasers and optics will take this down a little bit, and for budget I've added here an NC Star Blue via the Altor Key Mod 2 inch rail from Peacekeeper 2 and an ACOG from the fleet which takes us to 60 ergonomics. This weapon is still really snappy on ADS in this configuration and costs about a grand total of 130k for those who aren't as worried about economising. Regarding ammunition, the shining star of the 366 calibre is the APM ammunition that we mentioned earlier. This is great when paired with the longer range versions of the gun and as we said easily deals with class 4. To make a comparison to the M80 round that has dominated the first part of 1212, M80 has 80 damage and 41 pen versus the APM's 90 damage and 42 pen. At any practical distance they also both perform very similarly, with pen dropping to approximately 39 at 100 meters, which is still a good 75% chance to pen class 4 on the first hit. Close range with that damage it packs an incredible punch, but with the higher recoil of the 209 overall and the added 35 negative recoil as well can make it difficult to get enough consistent shots off versus opponents with lower recoil weapons or full auto. Of the other three ammo choices, I can't really imagine anyone trying to use Gexa for leg meta just because you don't get off enough targeted shots, and between EKO and FMJ, EKO does seem more realistic with a pen of 30. It won't outpace class 4 armour, but the minus 15 recoil bonus is alright. One thing to bear in mind if using at longer ranges is that the 209 is zeroed in for FMJ ammo which travels at 580 meters per second which makes it quite suited for using APM at 602 meters per second whereas EKO fires much faster at 770 and could cause your shots to go high over the crosshair. I tend to use this weapon exclusively with APM either from Mechanic 3 when you get there at 519 per round once you unlock it or directly from the fleet. There is a craft in the hideout which can be useful because it gives you a way to use up spare SP6 given you can't sell it on the flea market anymore, which at trader prices works out at around 700 rubles per shot. If you want to keep less rounds at risk, stack your mags with something else at the bottom, perhaps EKO for greatest pen and APM at the top, such as 20 and 10. This way you can keep a stack of 50 APM in your secure container and top load it, without losing 30k of ammo per mag if you die and you're buying it from the flea. As a budget or intermediate weapon, there is no doubt that this gun slaps pretty hard if you can hit your shots, and with the best ammo for the calibre available freely at level 15 on the flea, you can get some really good value in early with the 209. So as usual, if you learnt something, please consider dropping a like and a comment. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scav Talk podcast in the links below, and with all that said, I will see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.